there are many differences throughout the organisms that inhabit this planet, but deep down they all run from one common factor, their genetic code. Welcome to Beginner's Biology, where I'm hoping to give you a quick guide to basic biology content, either as a study aid or for general interest in the subject. Today's video will be a basic overview of DNA, nature's instruction manual, and the main molecule responsible for the diversity there is in life on this planet. Today I'm going to cover the storage and structure of DNA, and a quick overview of how it is used. So what is DNA? DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid, and this molecule is essentially the instruction manual responsible for the cell to create all of the proteins that it needs to function. As I mentioned briefly in my video on cells, DNA is stored either in the eukaryotic cell nucleus or the prokaryotic cell nucleoid. It is stored as a dense structure called a chromosome, which is a combination of DNA molecule and proteins that are used to hold it together and protect it. Different organisms have a different number of chromosomes. We humans have 46 chromosomes split into 23 pairs, whilst bacteria have a single circular chromosome that makes up the majority of the nucleoid. If we unravel the chromosome from the structural proteins that form the superstructure, we can find the DNA forms a tight fibre, like a string in a rope. This fibre is made up of a tight packaging of DNA wrapped around a protein called a histone, giving the appearance of a bead on a string. This is how DNA exists when it's not being used. When it's going to be used, a small section of the chromosome unravels and DNA comes away from this protein and exists purely as the famous double helix structure that most of us can recognise. This double helix structure is composed of two separate strands of DNA that are held together in the middle. Looking at just one of the two strands, we can see that they are made up of a chain of molecules. These molecules are called nucleotides, which we can see a representation of here. A nucleotide is made up of three components, a phosphate group, a deoxyribose sugar, and a variable nitrogenous base. In DNA molecules, there are four bases that are used, adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. These names are often abbreviated to A, T, C, and G respectively. On a single strand of DNA, Nucleotides are held together with bonds between the phosphate group on one nucleotide and the deoxyribose sugar on the next. The bases are the point at which the two DNA strands are held together and they fit together in a particular way. They form specific base pairs where adenine always pairs with thymine and cytosine always pairs with guanine. Remembering which bases match up can be tricky so finding a particular way to remember which bases pair up will help. I personally use the fact that A and T made the word at when I was first learning about DNA to help me remember which way they paired up. So now we have deconstructed DNA structure, what does it actually do? Well DNA is the instruction manual that tells the cell how to make proteins, which are important for the vast majority of functions in cells. The important part of this instruction manual is the sequence of bases on one strand of the DNA molecule. This sequence is the blueprint for the different stages that lead to the creation of proteins and is therefore the starting point for the entire process. We shall very quickly walk through the stages that DNA is the blueprint for, using this particular sequence as an example. First, the sequence is copied into a slightly different nucleic acid strand called RNA, in a process called transcription. This is not a perfect copy, as RNA has a slightly different structure and also has a modification to the thymine, or T base, represented here by the letter U. The RNA sequence then undergoes a process called translation, where the bases are read in groups of three and translated into an amino acid sequence, where the groups of three bases will relate to one amino acid molecule. As the RNA sequence continues to be read, further amino acids are added to produce an amino acid chain, which is the primary structure of proteins. This is a very quick overview of these processes, and they will be covered in more detail in a future video but show what DNA is used for and why it is so important in all currently known organisms. And with that we have reached the end of this brief introduction to DNA, but this is just the beginning of the DNA story. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it or found it useful, then please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more videos. Speaking of which, you can find my last video right here. Thanks again for watching and I'll hopefully see you in the next video.